Hey there, and welcome back to Up Next in Commerce. I'm your host, Stephanie Postles, CEO of Mission.org. So you may have seen Faraday retail stores or their clothing being sold at a store near you. But you may not know that Faraday brand started as an idea in a school essay. And many years later, twin brothers Alex and Mike Faraday turned it into a reality with strategic experience, experimental ideas, and through the power of storytelling. I was excited to talk to Alex today and hear about the entire journey and how some of it has even taken place right here in Austin, Texas. Now, before we get into this interview, I wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsors, Salesforce Commerce Cloud, who just put out the second edition State of Commerce Report. For tons of insights from thousands of commerce leaders, check out the second edition State of Commerce Report at sfdc.co slash commerce insights. That's sfdc.co slash commerce insights. All right, let's jump into the interview. Alex, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, so as I told you before, I have a twin, you have a twin. I feel like this is like a very good intro to this show of wanting to hear about starting a company with your twin brother. Like, when did this idea start? How long did you know? Tell me all the details around that. Yeah, um, so as you know, as a twin, you spend a lot of time with your twin uh, in your mm -hmm. lifetime, sharing your bedroom for 18 years. <laughs> yep. And when we were seniors in high school, my twin brother, Mike, wrote his college essay on uh, Faraday brand. So that was, you know, when we were 18. And that was when we started talking about the business. And Mike would be the designer. I would be the business person. And it sort of from like an early age, that was sort of our relationship was sort of took care of Mike. He was definitely more free spirited and didn't have a care in the world. And I was the brother that worried about everything. And I was always good at saving money and having little jobs along the way. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, been a long time coming. So back then, did you think it was going to turn into a reality or were you like, oh, this is a nice idea. Now I'm going to go and do like a real job. I think I, we always just sort of felt it was going to happen. Um, I don't think we were rushing to do it, but we were always mm -hmm. like one point in our life, we're going to hopefully get to a point where the stars are going to align and we can do this together. So from college to my first job, I definitely told everyone when they asked me, what do you want to do when you get older? I, was, I would always say, I'm going to have a clothing company with my brother. Um, mm. So I, I think we kept throwing it out to the world too, which always helps. Yep. Yeah, you manifested that thing. That's that's awesome. So for anyone who doesn't know, what is Faraday Brand? Uh, so Faraday Brand is a, uh, is a clothing company that we started about nine years ago. And uh, it's we, our, our sort of mission is to create a really high quality, sustainably minded product uh, we always say inspired by the sun. So the brand has a, you know, casual, beachy, outdoorsy vibe. And, uh, you know, it's all about life's great moments for, for us and how we think about the brand and, and uh, what we're inspired by. Yeah. So how did you get this inspiration? How did you know this was the style of clothing you wanted to build out? And what did that ideation process look like maybe in the beginning? Yeah. So it, it, it started as I think with with my brother's essay, which was about basically what we're doing now. Um, so it was, mm -hmm. we had a, we had a need as consumers starting at, you know, in high school. And, uh, we grew up in a small little beach town in New Jersey, on um, the Jersey shore, about an hour and a half outside of New York city, a little surf town. And, uh, so that was like our, one of our big passions growing up was that kind of like surf vibe. Um, and then my dad was commuting to New York city and decided he was sick of that. So we ended up moving to New York City and Manhattan when I was a teenager. And so you go from like this little small beach town surfer kids to living in New York City and you're like, what the heck is going on? And yeah. we couldn't find, you know, we were shopping in the department stores in New York City and we couldn't really find our vibe. And that was the start of it. Wow, okay. And so what did like the early beginnings look like? Who was, you know, which one of you were like, we're doing this and we're going to go and find someone to build this for us. Like, tell me about the early days. Yeah. So it started with Mike, uh, who's the designer and our creative director. Uh, Mike worked at Ralph Lauren for eight years as a designer. So Mike is really the creative force behind the design and the, and the, and the brand. So mm -hmm. he had gotten the point where he, you know, one day we started talking, he's like, I think I've, I think I'm ready. I think I've designed enough stuff for Ralph to kind of come up, come out on our own. And so that was in 2011, um, and I was working a finance job, and I don't know, we were just sort of at those points, we're just about turned 30, 
and it was sort of that do or die moment. And we said, let's, let's do it. So Mike started working on the brand for a year before I joined him, just working on the brand development and product development. And we launched the brand in early 2013. And how many products did you have when you launched? Uh, we started really small. We just made swimwear. So we made men's and women's swimwear, probably 12 SKUs of men's and 12 SKUs of women's, uh, all made out of recycled plastic water bottles with, you know, cool fabrics, cool designs. Um, but yeah, definitely got uh, a lesson early on that start small, smart, yeah. you know, start tight, learn the business. And then from there we added on. Mm, that's great. I mean, just thinking about him doing that on his own, that takes a lot of guts to be like, I'm going to do this for a year, you stay working your job, and then for you guys to come together. I mean, it just sounds like you have that vision, but also just, I would say the ability to also stay at your jobs and learn like that. I think that's like an undervalued piece of a lot of entrepreneurs journeys is actually being an entrepreneur within a company and learning the process and supply chain and design and then like being able to go off on your own instead of forcing it early on. Like that's a lot of wisdom to have, uh, yeah, before starting a company. Yeah. And you know, the world was definitely different when we graduated college in 2005. Like, you know, that mm -hmm. entrepreneurship that we see today, you know, wasn't as, as vibrant and alive. So mm -hmm. I think for us, it was like, we're going to get a regular job and, you know, learn as much as we can until we're ready to re ready mm -hmm. to go and grind it out and, and save, you know, for me, it was saving money because, you know, I okay. knew that this business was going to take a lot to get off the ground. So that was sort of my thing was how can I learn as much as I can and, and put as much money away so that, you know, we can make sure that when we're ready, that the dreams are reality. Yeah. So then fast forward to today, how many products do you have or like, what's the scale of the company now? Oh, um, so we're nine years in, mm -hmm. um, we launched the brand in April, 2013 from our favorite place in Puerto Rico in a little favorite little surf place. So that was nine years nice. ago. And now we're, um, you know, that full lifestyle brand, we men's and women's, uh, pretty much every category we do now. Um, some of our best selling categories are dresses for women and, and, uh, shorts and, and shirts for men. Uh, and yeah, we're now. You know, we're now, it's amazing what's happened over the last nine years. I mean, now we have, uh, around 400 employees. Wow. Uh, that's a lot of employees. Yeah. I did not realize you all had 400 employees. Uh, we have almost 40 retail stores across the country mm -hmm. and, uh, our online shop, fairybrand.com. And then we also have a wholesale business where we sell to really cool specialty clothing stores for men and women, a uh, few department stores. We have a nice business with Nordstrom nationwide. So, um, kind of built out all the different omni-channel, you know, distribution points over the last nine years and, mm -hmm. uh, and now it's rolling. Yeah, that, that's great. I mean, it seems like that's something that you were pretty strategic about early on. I was reading a couple articles around like how to diversify, you know, your like revenue streams and your supply chain and all this. I mean, was this something you knew right away that you wanted to do or something that you more stumbled onto? It was from the beginning, you know, I think because I spent a lot of time thinking about Faraday and it was like a lifetime of wanting to do it that definitely studied the best brands in the world from before us and what they did and how they were able to build great brands and be successful. And, you know, the unanimous from the big luxury brands to Ralph Lauren was, you know, have, have beautiful retail stores, have great wholesale distribution and have, you know, have your online site. and. You know, we, we, um, we always wanted to build the business in the most, in the best possible way it would be successful, which was, you know, a lot of, you know, diversification, try different things, get the brand out there as much as possible. And we, you know, we, we, you know, for the most part, we strapped the business and, and were able to kind of think about what was in the best interest of Faraday for the next hundred years versus, you know, what a, what an investor thought was the best thing to do at the time. Mm -hmm. So how did you get these partnerships? I mean, how did you get in the Nordstrom's? I mean, I'm sure when people look at your company, they're like, wow, okay, they're doing a lot. They've got a lot of like the best companies selling their products. They have their own retail locations. I mean, what did it look like striking up so partnerships with different retailers? One of the things we did when we started was, uh, we built a mobile store. 
and we call it the mobile beach house. So we custom okay. built with a friend in New Hampshire who's a art, who's a builder, um, basically a container that looked like a little beach house that was on hydraulic system that opened out um, and created this really cool, you know, mobile retail experience. Mm -hmm. And for the first, uh, we went to the first trade show season in the summer of 2013, and we brought that mobile store everywhere with us. Cool. So we parked mm -hmm. it outside a big trade show uh, in Manhattan, and then we drove it to Las Vegas. Um, and pulled it into the Las Vegas project trade show. So we kind of were like, if we're going to make a splash, let's, let's get on the road. So we, we spent the first six months of the business on the road with our mobile store. And we, we were linking up with different retailers, doing different events, and then kind of being at the trade show with this thing to kind of make a, make a bang. And, uh, yeah. you know, people are always looking for something new and, and, you know, we had a good story and the time you know a small tight curated product and and yeah we got some nice bites early on what did you learn while you were on the road were there any surprises or maybe just things that you weren't really expecting um we learned uh you know i think we learned the power of uh of of the importance of physical retail and the one-on-one -on -one connections that you can make with consumers and how that you know creates a stronger relationship. So, you know, we met people on the road, they, they bought stuff, we stayed in touch with them and they became, you know, they become huge supporters of us and, and told their friends about it. Cause it was just a very personal, you know, when you're like walking down the street and you see this crazy looking store and you walk up yep. and you see the founders selling bathing suits to you, uh, <laughs> you know, I think it was impactful and, um, and you know, it's, it's definitely different than, you know, putting money to digital advertising, you know, mm -hmm. it's such a much more intimate way. And I think for us, it helped us learn like the importance of customer feedback, importance of real-time fit feedback, uh, brand feedback. And yeah, it was just exciting. It was exciting. I think people were excited for us. They were uh, excited for what the, you know, what our sort of, you know, sort of future aspiration with the brand was. And, and it was also just a ton of fun. Um, mm -hmm. I went with my wife, Carrie, who's also a partner in the business with us that and my brother, Mike, and our, our friend, who's a photographer, Matt, and we were gone for almost six months. Wow. That's amazing. So would you do that again, or do you have some new flashy, you know, campaign that you're doing or something different? I mean, now, you know, now the business is at a different scale where, uh, yeah. but I, you know, some of my fondest memories, uh, are, are with, you know, with the mobile store. And so we always, you know, we'll do an event a couple times a year, kind of just to mm -hmm. stay, stay close to what's going on. Um, but we've always had like, it would be cool to make this a bigger strategy within the brand and kind of have these little mm -hmm. mobile units rolling around the country. So it's definitely in our plans. Yeah. I mean, I see here in Austin, there's quite a few people who, uh, set up their mobile type of definitely not as cool as a bus, but they set these things up on South Congress and it draws a lot of buzz because I think it's just something that, you know, people have been missing for a couple of years. It's like, yes, I can finally experience something new and be around other people and try this and buy. And so in the nine year journey, I mean, I always like whenever I'm talking to founders, you hear about this kind of tipping point where, you know, by year three or four or something, it's like things started to get a little bit easier maybe, or there was like this aha moment in the business that just kind of changed everything forever. Was there a moment in the past nine years where, you know, like some big pivotal moment that you realized something and it kind of changed the course of things? There's, there's the first you know, the first time we opened up our first sort of like flagship retail store, which was our second store in Malibu, California, um, you know, we spent a bunch of money on the, on the build out, the rent was really high. So it was definitely like a big moment for us around a bunch of other big, you know, national, international brands and just being there for that opening and, and seeing the business we did that first weekend and be like, wow, this is actually, this can work in a bigger retail environment was, mm -hmm. was amazing. Uh, and I just love Mad was always was always a favorite place for me to visit as a kid and love surfing there. So that was definitely an awesome moment. That was in 2016. So about half, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of years in. And then I definitely say, um, you know, at some point last year in May and and June, when the world sort of opened up from COVID and, and it was sort of just hard to tell how much hard, you know, all the hard work we were doing on product development and online marketing. Um, to really know how much of an impact that made over that year and a half, because it was definitely for mm -hmm. everyone a challenging 2020 and, and 
you know, until things opened up last summer, just a lot of unknowns. And when the world opened up, um, it was just awesome to see this, the, the momentum that we had built through the pandemic. And I think our product was the right product for, you know, a little bit of a post pandemic world, comfortable, mm -hmm. soft, casual. And, uh, and we just really, the business really hit a new trajectory last summer and, mm -hmm. and it's been amazing now to be able to use that momentum to really invest in the company and the, and the team and try and really build a world-class, world-class business. Yeah, that's great. You've mentioned in the past, um, you know, how storytelling is a big part of the brand. And I want to hear how you all go about that. I mean, what does that actually look like? What is the story that you're telling behind the brand and how does it connect? Yes. Yeah, so, um, I think a lot of it starts with, you know, we're, we're kind of old school in that we put our name on the brand. You know, that's definitely mm -hmm. something you don't see a lot of brands do this day, this day and age. And so it's really is a lot of it comes from Mike, Carey and I as, as like our, our vision and what we love about the world and, and our community. So I think the storytelling, a lot of it starts with kind of us. Um, mm -hmm. and then from there we, you know, definitely try and think about how, how Faraday can make an impact, you know, sort of within our customer base, within our community. Um, so everything from our, our big campaign last spring was, you know, we live in New York now and we did a campaign around the restaurants of New York. Um, and highlighted a bunch of great, great restaurants and chefs because they obviously were, were battered down by the pandemic. And that was just a great way to, you know, meet some great people, visit some great restaurants and also tell their story to our, um, mm -hmm. to our customer base. So that's, you know, that's one example. Most recently we went on a surf trip for a friend's 40th birthday party to Costa Rica. And, uh, nice. and we sort of captured that as our, our kind of men's summer, uh, content. You know, and it was just an awesome trip. We spent the most most of the time on a boat in the middle of the ocean, and just a lot of fun fun memories. And so we were able to, you know, we have some friends who are photographers who are, who are friends, so it doesn't feel like it that it's a mm -hmm. you know it's a photo shoot. So trying to think incorporate what, what's exciting us in the world, um, how we can lift up our communities that are that are around us is sort of a lot of the way we think about storytelling. And then you know the next step is just on product. You know. Um, you know, we design everything pretty much from scratch. So There's a huge product development effort that goes into everything that we make. And, and so I think whether that's our lifetime guarantee that we have or just the, the, the way we want every, everything to feel amazing when you touch it, um, you know, trying to really get that story out as well, because that's, mm -hmm. that's definitely one of the things that keeps people coming back. Yeah. Do you find, I mean, how do you, I'm thinking about like your customers looking at you and your brother as the face of this brand. How do you think about you know, positioning yourself within the brand and then the brand on its own, or is it all one? Because I can imagine a lot of people just following you to try and figure out what are you doing in Costa Rica? You know, I want to see what your life looks like and what you're wearing. And then also having the brand as well that you're trying to, you know, showcase to other people who maybe aren't following you. But how do you think about those two? Uh, it's a good question, because I think there's definitely, you know, the brand lives without Mike Carey and I, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think, how do we, you know, think about whether that's what we think about our people that are ambassadors to the brand and how they show up um, and how their values and like-mindedness kind of gets out to the world, um, mm -hmm. I think is one thing. And then the second thing, going back to like, you know, this is our brand. So I think we're, we've learned to just embrace that aspect of it. Like this is, you know, this is what we've been spending our whole life talking about. So, you know, let's really show the, you know, let's really have this brand be from the inside of what what's in our hearts about what we want to do. So I think that's mm -hmm. definitely an evolution because there's times when we're like, well, we don't want it to be so much about us. Like, you know, let's make the brand bigger than us. But then it's like, well, your name's on it. Uh, and you it's hard, it's, <laughs> it's hard to do that. So I think then for us, it's, yeah. it's been, um, a learning, a learning experience kind of figuring out how and where did, do we come into the whole brand? Um, and a lot of it's just asking, asking our customers, like what, what they mm -hmm. want to see and what they're engaging with. And that also drives, um, that's definitely driven us to be more involved in the marketing of the brand. Um, mm -hmm. as the customer saying like, you know, that's one of the reasons I love you guys is, is you guys are real authentic people behind the mm -hmm. brand. And, uh, and that's what, that's one of the things that really excites me about it. Yeah. I can imagine customers maybe seeing you at one of your retail locations or in your bus or something and getting super excited to connect with, you know, the people who founded the company. Yeah. Yeah. We're, you know, we're young and 
excited about this, want to do this the rest of our lives. So, um, yeah, I mean, our customers are kind of along, along for the journey with us. I mean, they're, they're, mm-hmm. they're watching us evolve our product. They're watching us evolve our creative, uh, kind of along the way. And, and as they're growing, we're growing and trying new things. So, you know, kind of create that, that cool relationship with your customer where they feel that trust that we're going to make the best decisions and, you know, do what's right, you know, by them in mm-hmm. our community. Yeah, I love that. So you said last year it was kind of a pivotal moment um, where basically all the hard work that you'd been doing kind of started to, you know, show the results and you started, you know, benefiting from all that hard work. How did you start going after acquiring new customers or even nurturing your current customers after that shakeup, you know, of a few years? So definitely leaning into uh, in real life shopping. So Mm -hmm. I think we definitely got ahead of that and saw that that was going to be something that people wanted to do on the other end of mm-hmm. being locked up, you know, not, not doing much for a year and a half. So I think, you know, we were conscious in 2020, like let's really invest in our, in our brick and mortar and in real and in our, you know, brick and mortar strategy and in real life shopping strategy. Cause that's what really people are going to, are going to miss a lot. So yep. when other brands were saying, you know, retail's dead online only yeah. i think we were like yeah for a moment in time let's take advantage of the online but let's invest ahead of 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 where where people are going to want to be on the other end of this so we opened mm-hmm. up a bunch of stores last year and they've all been super successful and and definitely been a great um you know jumping off point for us to continue to invest into physical retail continue invest into our partnerships with our with our retailers um because that's mm-hmm. for a product company where it's all about the touch and feel and fit you know, in real life is just the best way for a customer to, to to get their hands on that and really feel it um, and engage with the brand. So that's definitely been a big, a huge emphasis for us over the last, uh, you know, 12 to 18 months. Yeah. I mean, super strategic when everyone else is running away from retail here, you all are coming in and, you know, opening more than you have or buying a bunch of locations. Like that's, that's very strategic. How do you go about creating a good retail experience? I mean, what does that look like? How do you make it unique to your brand to where people want to go there and experience that? So uh, going back to the family business. So my mom is also a partner in the business. And my mom my mom has- <laughs> Okay, your mom, your wife, wife yep. your brother, anyone else I need to know about? <laughs> Just us four, yeah. For, okay. That's about it. I think we're tapped with those four. Uh, and so mom is a, uh, she's an interior designer. So she's been designing our stores. Um, oh, she's cool. designed all the stores that we've done. So- Wow. She's got a great eye. She's super talented, and her and Mike really work together on creating a, um, you know, just a, like a, an, an experience when you walk into one of our stores, which just feels like a great place to shop. It's got great music. Mm-hmm. It's got great color. It's got great vibes. Um, you know, it doesn't feel big, boxy, and 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 intimidating. And trying to find the right mix of, you know, the right clothes for that right location, so it really fits in with the community and and what that customer really wants. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it really all starts with mom and, and her vision and, and, you know, we work with local artists in different, in our different locations to do co- cool murals. And, uh, it's just like, how do you make that shopping experience the best shopping experience someone's ever had? And that's really mm-hmm. one of the things we wake up every day and try and figure out. Yeah, that's great. Do you and your mom and brother, like, do you guys ever have to go head to head on things? I can just imagine working with family and like, sometimes it's probably wonderful and great, especially, you know, when you're a twin, usually you're on the same page about most things in life, it seems, but like bringing in parents and wives, like, what does that dynamic look like? Uh, it's been hard. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not, uh, you know, it definitely added a, it added a level of, um, you know, a level of non-business stress that you had to that we've had to deal with um yeah. to your for, first point i think you know i'm the i'm the 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 son of cfo and ceo so i really watch the budgets and and try and make the business model really work and you know mm-hmm. my mom and mike are designers so there's definitely like do we really yeah. need to do this do we really need to do that like is it really going to change the customer experience and so you know we we yeah. we've we debate, you know, we, we have friendly debates and we try and, you know, we're all in it for the right reasons. We're all in this to make this business successful. So, you know, we learn to compromise and just make decisions, but there's definitely back and forth when we are designing yeah. a store for sure. And, and so, yeah, we've just learned over time. I think what we've also learned is communication is key. So how do we communicate and just 
talk through things, work through things, like not let things fester. Um, cause then we also, you know, I live, I live with my mom as well. So my wife and I live with my mom, um, and our two kids. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's a lot of together time. And so, yeah, yeah. We, it's some therapy along the way has helped, uh, <laughs> going to work on yourself too. So we've definitely done yeah. that. And now, you know, now that things are, you know, we're, we're learning and getting in a better spot and building out the team. Like now it's, you know, it's such a gift that we have to, to be able to work on this together. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. The last thing I want to ask is what one thing are you most excited about over the next like one to two years? What are you working on? What, you know, new tools or tech are you implementing or like, yeah, what are you just most excited about? So I'm most, uh, I'd say if I could distill it to one thing, um, I'm most excited about, uh, now that we've gotten to some level of scale, uh, and our infrastructures in a, in a much better spot is when it comes to product is I, I really think we have the ability to, to really like be a best in best in the world, um, type of product for what we're doing. And, and, and I think that's really what motivates us all every day is, is like, how are we just obsessing over every single detail such that the customer, when they get something from Faraday, you know, no, we're never going to own someone's closet, but you mm -hmm. know, someone's always going to go in their closet and kind of keep coming back to their Faraday item. Be like, you know, I got all this other stuff, but like, I just want to wear my Faraday thing. Like, it's just the, the best thing I have. And that's like, you know, a maniacal thing that we, that we really try and do every day. And I think now that we have, you know, the factory relationships, the mill relationships, the, you know, just sort of that, that, you know, take some time to get to like that level of scale where, you know, you can do anything mm -hmm. you want to do and now we can. And so, uh, it's just so cool. And our business is amazing because every three months we kind of have a new, you know, new fresh, you know, season that we're able to do. So it's always evolving. It's always, you know, a little bit different. Um, you know, we really built out our women's business over the last couple of years, which has been super fun. And that's, mm -hmm. that's got a whole bunch of opportunity that we've been building our team on. So, you know, product is just, it's in this, you know, fashion and product is just, it's, it's addicting and it's so fun to be able to just try new things and make things better. That's awesome. Yeah. I saw those women overalls. I'm like, those are cute. <laughs> I need to, I need to get, give me a pair of those. <laughs> well, Alex, thanks so much for jumping on the show today. It's been a really fun chat. Where can people find Faraday brand? Where can they find your products? Cool. So, uh, FaradayBrand.com is our flagship website. So definitely check it out. And then, as I said, we're available in a bunch of great retailers across, across the country. So, uh, it's at Nordstrom's and Bloomingdale's and then a bunch of specialty stores. Um, so, you know, find us at your favorite store to shop for sure. And then we also have, as I said, for around 40 retail stores. So, um, we are, we're in most, most big cities now. Um, so check out our store locator page on our website and, and come check out mom's mom's beautiful store that she designed. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Alex. Cool. See you, Stephanie. If you're looking for the number one platform for all things commerce, there's no better choice. So definitely go check it out at salesforce.com slash commerce.